Now, Davy Crockett was lucky he was such a gifted speaker, because once he got to Congress, he had an awful hard time getting anything else accomplished. But he was not the kind of man who gave up easily. So when election time came around again, he ran again. First of all, friends and neighbors, I want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in Tennessee. As far as you and me are concerned, those politicians in Washington are worth about as much as a wide shot at a fat bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, I'd be grateful for the chance to go on back and put them on the right track. Now, we all know how my worthy opponent here can smile. Why, he can even outgrin me. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that that takes a heap of grinning. It reminds me of the time I was out hunting, and I discovered that raccoons could not stand my grin. Why, well, I'd find one sitting in a tree, and I'd just stand there grinning for five or ten minutes. And he'd fall right off that tree and into my arms without even a whimper. <laughs> I swear, it's the truth when I say I got the meanest wife, the straightest gun, the ugliest dog, and the sweetest grin on record. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, pretty soon the sun set and the moon was shining bright and clear. I saw a particularly fat coon sitting way up on the top of a tree. Now, he wasn't facing my way, but that didn't make no never mind. I gave him a casual kind of grin, you know, not hair moved. I tried a little harder, thinking maybe that I had lost my powers of concentration for a minute. Still nothing. Now I was determined to meet that coon face to face. I turned my rifle over and stuck the nose right in the ground. Then I put my stock in under my jaw and just let my face rest there a spell. Then I started grinning with all my might. That coon still seemed to have more important business on his mind, so I ran back to the house, got my axe, came back and chopped that whole tree down. I went over to the branch that coon was on, and lo and behold, if it weren't a coon at all, it was a big old knot of wood like a hump on a camel. And I saw that I had stripped off the bark and grinned that knot straight down to the skin. Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear you. Now, you must admit, friends and neighbors, that I'm no peapod when it comes to grinning. But I freely admit that my worthy opponent here has me beat six ways from Sunday. So let me give you a word of advice. Stay sharp, or he'll grin you right out of your votes. <laughs>